Last week on Harbour Nights, Kathleen Murray paid her first ever visit to the circus. Daphne showed off her high-stepping dancing skills. Catherine welcomed the return of her head barman, Peter, to Stopford House. And John got a saucy birthday surprise. Core Town's end-of-season foiture festival is in full swing. Sergeant Mick O'Connor gets ready to go out on patrol. However, he's not anticipating any trouble. Uh, all the families are getting ready to go back to school in two weeks' time, so this will be the final trip down to Core Town, I would say. Not expecting too much trouble, but we'll have a good crowd in the disco again tonight, 1,500 possibly. There should be 2,000 2, people watching Lyndon Martin, maybe, if right. all goes well. Right? Uh, traffic problems will be the main thing now for the first part tonight. Ah, it's lovely and fine. I'm confident as usual. Things will be okay. Eurostar Linda Martin, performing on the back of a lorry, is the highlight of this year's Foyter Festival. Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves, but there's someone in the crowd that Linda doesn't know about. Father Paddy Norton is Core Town's famous healing priest. He loves to sing. And smile, smile, smile. And he loves to bang out a tune on the harmonica. What Linda doesn't know is that Father Norton can't resist a turn on stage. We have a surprise. You wait, you wait now, wait for a few minutes. Father Paddy's come up on stage and He's going to do Danny Boy. Danny, if you see once more that you love me, well then I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Well, you're getting value for money tonight. It looks like Father Norton has stolen Linda's show. I'm going to see Catherine Somerville, the proprietor of the Stafford House Hotel. Tonight is the last night of the line dancing sessions at Stafford House with local musician Tommy Carroll. Dancing was one of the few things that worked out well for Catherine Somerville Large in a rather shaky summer season. But perhaps she missed out on the best local act of all. Our father Martin Martin stole the show on Linda Martin down the street. Go away. Was he singing yeah. out on the street? No, I said Linda Martin up on the stage. Yeah, the and, he, and did the, the father went up onto the gig. He did, and I think he sang six songs. He did not? Yeah. Ah, for God's sake. Linda, Linda they had a tug of war over the microphone. I'd say. <laughs> 
It'll only be the old tumbleweed on the 1st of September going down, rolling down the main street. Oh, it has been a good season, really. And I mean, it's quiet, and that's the main thing, isn't it, really? For the most part. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And it's the first year, really, the houses have been on the go, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't know, um, the ones opposite but here seem to have been... A, a lot of the house people don't seem to be a bottle of wine and yeah, I thought stay that. at home. I see them yeah. going in with little yeah. bottles and they seem to have the kids yeah. and stay at home. Yeah. But maybe English people are more like that. Yeah. Not more English. Linda Martin's show was coming to an end, but the guest star of the evening is happily tootling home. Right. And I'd say goodbye to, to all of us now. And we look forward to next year again. I'm going back to America on the 11th of, Fe of November. And I'll be back here again at the end of April to enjoy this lovely place. And say hi to the Dubliners and hi to everybody and more sing songs and everything else. Yes, thank you. And I must go to bed now and sleep <laughs> and sing to Goodbye. goodbye. I wish you all the last goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. No, you didn't say goodbye. Goodbye. I wish you all a last goodbye. <laughs> It's a dreary, drizzly start to the last day in Court Town for Kathleen Murray and her caravan gang. Now it's just really getting like a miserable ghost town. But that's the rain. But it will get very, very lonely. And it's when it's like this then you say, ah, oh, well, the, the summer is gone and you get back to the fires Normally, and yeah. the centre of the evening. Have you, have you and all to get much of thanks? Get a little bit some bobs that I said. Don't Can you have a last goodbye, Declan. We'll be off this now. Last ramble this is our last ramble around. Heading back to yeah. the big swamp. And yeah. how is it like now in the winter yeah. down here? It's beautiful down here. Yeah, this is really beautiful. People in the city think that we have nothing to do here in the winter yeah. time. You'd, you'd be amazed mm. at, at the things that goes on. Yeah. Goes on, yeah. Yeah. You have great fun, yeah. Will you miss us? Of course we will. Oh, of no, course we will. <laughs> no, no, honest to God, we will. You miss us. It gets lonely. It's, it's lonely for about three or four weeks. weeks. And then you can. And then you set the into another, routine. another. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. saying yeah. now to Annie. Another but routine. We go home. We hate going home. And we go home and you, miss you her. say, yeah, "Oh, she's we like do. a devil. You better yeah. leave her alone." But after a couple of weeks, then you get kind of back in. It's been a sometimes stormy season for Sergeant Mick O'Connor and his small Court Town Guard crew. We've got a station to check out. I think you're in rage. Today he's taking his team for a well earned trip on the water. We go fishing maybe three, four times a year. But this is the first time I've brought a whole gang from the station. Uh, I think three of them is the first trip out. Tom is the, the old salt, wherever he is. Tom has been out before. Cornwall has always been uh, a fishing village, primarily. Uh, before the tourists, the, the fish. Fish were here before the tourists. The seas around Cortown are crawling with an ugly sea snail called the whelk. Whelks are not popular on local dinner tables. Instead, they're exported as a delicacy to Korea and Japan. But making the gang are happy to land a bumper haul of gleaming silver mackerel. Hey! Oh, oh, Mick! Hey! 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 At the Woodside Holiday Estate, Daphne O'Donoghue prepares for an end-of-season bash. We're having a barbecue this evening for all the uh, guests at Woodside, an end-of-summer barbecue. So uh, I'm busy running around between checking people in and uh, getting some uh, food ready. So uh, you're just going to have to 
Bear with me. It's, it's an end of summer barbecue and it's just really, we, we, we've had a really good summer. And, um, you know, the, the people have really almost made it for us, so uh, we just want to give something back this week. So, that's what we're doing tonight. Loads to eat, loads to drink, and uh, I'm pretty tired. I mean, it's not too bad, you know. If you keep going, you, you don't really feel it. If you start to kind of slow down a bit, I, I think you do. But a nice long lion is uh, something I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> Publican Alan Switzer has brought some vital challenge. lubrication for Daphne's guests. How are the houses going? Great, yeah, we've had a good season. Yeah. You know, we're very happy with how things have gone. We, we only opened the 3rd of June, so, yeah, so you know, it's yeah. the first year, like, yeah. you know. Well, we, that's great. That's, that's perfect. Lovely. It's been a successful day's fishing for Mick O'Connor and his Garda crew. And for once, the much maligned whelk is going to make it onto the menu of a local restaurant. When they tell me, you know, uh, Dara asked me to get him some whelks. He's going to make some dish, which I have to sample later. He says, uh, I don't know what it's the most hold down whelks, but we'll try. Hello, Dara. How are you, Mick? You are. Brought you some whelks. This is very good. <laughs> I believe you're going to do something with them. Yeah, throw them out the window. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how it goes. So um, work your magic on them anyway. We'll, we'll see what we can do anyway. We booked in half eight, a gang of us. Half eight, yeah. That's okay. I'm in hospital with a nervous breakdown. You know whose day is. The food over at Daphne's barbecue is definitely easier to stomach. member of uh, a local band called the Kick-Ass Cuckoos and they recently launched their CD so Noel's going to just uh, play a few tunes first. Postmaster Declan Dunbar's son Noel has written a surprise song to celebrate the close of the 99th season in Corton. Have you stood by the ocean and watched silent steamers sail safely Across creamy white foam Did you skip her a crew A sailboat old or new Upon seas where you felt so alone For the harbour is home Where the fishermen roam And tell stories beneath harbour lights For the harbour is home Where the fishermen roam And sing sea shanties Have you felt the delight on a cold winter's night to sail into the harbor your home? Did you suffer the light across seas day and night to haul catch for your loved ones at home? For the harbor is home where the fishermen roam and tell stories beneath harbor lights. For the harbor is home. Fishermen roam and sing sea shanties in these harbor nights. At Il Molino, Kathleen Murray is about to be offered something unusual to tickle her taste buds. This is Murray, is it? Oh, how are you, Dara? How are you? Nice to meet you. My hands are wet. Working hands. Queer, 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 well, These are, are the birds, yeah. Oh, God. They're... Do you know what they're like? They're like a, a winkle. They're sea snails. Oh, God. There's, no, there's nobody eats them much around here. Uh, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take it out of the shell for you, right? It's a little, this is the little door. Yeah. It's part of the yeah. shell. It's right? like, we call that the scab off the winkle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just take it out. Oh, good Lord. 
Oh, no. Not taste it, that. Oh, no, I don't think I would. Are you sure? I would think that. Would you like that. to try some? Would you like to try it, no? Not many people, not many people are keen on it. I wouldn't mind the shell, all right. Yeah. The shell is nice, all right. I'd like the shell, yeah. It'd make a lovely ring, wouldn't it? Souvenir <laughs> in my garden. Yeah. I better go in and start walking again. We'll see you, Mr. Murray. Thanks for coming up. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's a pity you're not older, Amanda. He'd make a lovely boyfriend. <laughs> we would be able to cook your dinner every day, how bad you'd be. Wouldn't that be all right? Yeah. It's been an erratic season for Catherine at Stopford House. Her staff weren't always up to gourmet standards. <laughs> Her parties for the travelling community weren't always welcome locally. We can't get any um, minibuses to come for them because they're travellers. Her plans to bring rave music to Court Town were scuppered. The guys are totally against it and they have the power to stop us having it. And her replacement cabaret act was blood curdling but unprofitable. A weary Catherine has reached a decision. I've decided that we're going to move from here. I haven't told Nick yet, but however, I'm going to tell Peter first, as he needs to know first. Hi, P. Good evening. Oh, look. Look at this. Well, your look sandwich this. making has improved. Well, you see, I, I sort of done this during yeah. the day because I had to stay out of the way of Mick O'Connor, you know. He's, yeah, well, this is how you know. you've done it, but it's a pity now that it's improved because I have news for you. I'm fired. Yes. <laughs> I got out to celebrate the night. I finished. I want a double. Have a drink. <laughs> no, I've decided you're not fired. I have decided we're going to sell the place and move on. So you're going to be the first to know. I haven't told me or anyone. So what do right. you think? Right. Well, before we actually go to New Glass, right. I'm finished making sandwiches. I'm finished cooking. And I'm finished doing all that and barrel. OK. Four. Sale. To the highest bidder. I'll just show you. <laughs> Offers. <laughs> In the region of... <laughs> Wait now. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Lucky you didn't just put two no. <laughs> Everything was abnormal, walking here. It started a bit like, while well, the faulty towers were sort of a bit more... <laughs> they weren't actually asked to do what we had to actually do. Well, what I had to actually do. This is true. This is Just true. Just call me Manuel and I run. <laughs> <laughs> and as we know, I mean, Peter is like a dog. You know, he's not just for Christmas. No, he's just for pat him on the head and he'll go. He's for the rest of your life. So the two of us will go off to another pub and... See what happens there. Constant of this baby. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck indeed. And good luck to court town. Mm. May they have many winters. <laughs> May they have many summers and longer summers. <laughs> many, many, many long So, what kind of recipe did Dara come up with to make the rather tough-looking whelk attractive to the local palate? I chopped it up very fine, um, and I didn't make it a total whelk dish. What I did was I added it into a chowder, so it's mostly whelk meat. It's, it's about 75% whelk meat. I added a few little bits of salmon. You can see the pink salmon. Some vegetables in it, this celery, leek, carrot. Reduced it down with white wine. Hopefully now we'll see what uh, Mick and the rest of our seafaring gentry think of it later on, you know, so. But uh, I've tried it and I'm quite happy with it. It's quite tasty, so. Um... What table is Mick at? Uh, Will Sergeant Mick O'Connor and his wife Stephanie enjoy Dara's fishy snail dish? Hey, Michael. <laughs> experiment here on the side. I'll just leave this here. I'm trying to get the courage to <laughs> taste it. I've had it myself. I've had it already. It's very nice. And you're still standing. I tried the well from the shell straight away. Like live? Oh, I didn't eat them live. Eh? Cooked. 
They're too hard to get out when they're like. Mm. Uh, I see the salmon. They're very nice, actually. That'd be brave. It's a very, very lean fish. I wonder, should I take a hint at this now that I've been asked to taste this first? Well, that's the salmon you're tasting anyway, so. Well, we'd start for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something on, on, on the. Oh, there's a bit of a There's a bit of a there. I think you may have a bit of a wild there. And yourself. Yes. You'll know by the texture of it. Very strong. Yeah. Fishy taste. Yeah. But very nice. Too big. Mmm. I think I think I'll stick to the salmon bits. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, nobody around here actually has them on a menu or. And, and I'm surprised. I'm <laughs> shocked. That's fine. And Eve could have got a fiver off of me out there today if, if uh, she wanted a bit to bet the guy well. I didn't say no. It's quite there nice, though. I'd have doubled the bet if I was you. I'd have doubled the bet. No, the bet would be there, wouldn't you? Oh, okay. Enjoy your meal. That's, uh, wraps it up for tonight, anyway. Um, I think Mick and everybody else was, was happy. Uh, it's kind of drawing, well, it's drawing near the end of the season now. The summer is practically over now, but the summer was brilliant. The restaurant took off really well. We were booked out almost every night. We've learned a lot, like, over the season. And uh, all I can say, really, is uh, we're looking forward to the winter. Core Town may be a small little hick town, but uh, I'm spending my winter here, folks. It's the very last day of the season, and beach guard Joyce is wistfully surveying her empty beach. This summer it was totally weird. It was just like kept going non-stop. I mean, it started like with for John turned around and said, "Hey, Joyce, you're sticking in for the Mr. Expert." Ha ha ha! And I was like, you know, you kind of go along with him for the laugh. And I was relieved, you know, when it was like when Ruth right when Ruth won. Like I was like, oh, my God, this is over now. And then they ring me back three weeks. Later for the bloody Miss Ireland competition. Before I knew it, I was sitting in the Burlington, walking around in my little pink swimming tabs in front of Jim Core. <laughs> swear to God, things couldn't get much worse than that. Like, to be honest, at this stage, you don't know what to expect in this place. Although it's now like the end of August, and we're all getting ready to kind of go off. I'm one way I'm a bit sorry living in because this is my last, my last year doing the beach, so it's kind of. I'm an L1 now. <laughs> Over the hill and far away. The end of this week, I'm flying out to France. So it's kind of a bye bye court down and hello, France. Maybe a few more men. Yeah. Hope for the best. I suppose at this stage, anything going to be better than court down. <laughs> Park, Kathleen Murray is packed and ready for the off. Now say goodbye. Goodbye, caravan. Bless yourself, leave him. There's a good child. Now you've been all enjoyed yourself. I lock my door now. Shut out my door. We're saying goodbye to you all. When will we see you again? Next year, and you have to say goodbye. See you, Annie. See, see you, God, goodbye. God, yeah, God, yeah. God, yeah. And I'll give you a ring during the winter, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll meet up during the winter, and anyway, see you. Goodbye. goodbye. See you, John. Is your heart broken, Amanda? <laughs> oh, goodbye. Goodbye, caravan. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> And as the summer fades, we bid a final farewell to Courtown Harbour, just a little village by the sea that some like to call home. Go away, Eve, okay? Today is a um, very exciting day. <laughs> so just go away and let me think. <laughs> you know what I mean? That I get pressurised into this thing. He's such a nice man. Such a nice man. It's so easy to manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't get on our nerves, though. We didn't know you were here. 